Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. I am in the process of uh, making some quilts and filming all the steps of it, but those are kind of time consuming to get filmed, well and made. So I thought I would do a few small projects that I could put up while I'm working on the quilts. The first quilt I'm working on is a stained glass quilt. And it's a really fun one to do, so I'm enjoying that. So uh, hopefully here real soon, it will be up and posted. But for today, what we're going to do is start on a series of uh, fruit potholders, including a tree to hang them off of. Today's potholder is going to be the apple. And when this series is done, I've got five fruits designed so far. Um, I don't know. I'll think about if there's any other ones I want to add to it. But when the series is done, then I will have a pattern with all the templates up in my Etsy shop. And it will probably be about $3 to get all the templates. But you can probably draw your own templates. There's nothing to stop you from doing that. This is this is not something I have copyrighted or trademarked or anything. So, okay, what you're going to need is, since we're doing an apple, some sort of red print, and you need a front and a back. I'm gonna use the same fabric on both, and a piece of Insel Bright. And these need to be at least seven inches tall and at least eight inches wide. And then, of course, our apple pattern, which I cut out of a magazine, uh, I mean, I cut it myself, but used a magazine piece for that, just page, because I couldn't find any paper laying around. Then you need about a four inch square uh, front and back of a green fabric for our leaves and a couple of leaf templates. We're gonna need a stem. I cut a one inch piece. This is way longer than we need. Probably only need half of this, maybe. I mean, I'd cut it six inches to start with, That'll be plenty. And then we're gonna need some binding to go around the edge, and you can use bias tape, uh, but I didn't have any of the real narrow bias tape, and I kinda wanted it to match anyway, so I don't want the bias tape to be the predominant feature. I want it to blend in with the pot holder. So I cut my own, and I cut it an inch and a quarter wide, uh, we'll see if that's the right width. Most of the time I make up a sample pattern ahead of time, but I have to confess I haven't on this one. So we're going to see if that, I think that's going to be plenty wide. I may end, even end up cutting it back to about an inch. Then something to mark with that's erasable or uh, water soluble or something like that, or chalk, some scissors, pins or clippies, either one. Okay, the first thing we need to do is quilt our apple, even before we cut it out. So I am going to sandwich my insole bright between my two pieces of fabric, and I chose this dotted Swiss I guess this is dotted Swiss, it's a polka dot anyway. Fabric, um, for a lot of reasons, it was the right shade of red and everything. But I, I like that I can quilt on the diagonal lines and I don't have to draw any lines. So if you need to draw any lines on there, you'll wanna use an erasable marker of some sort. So I'm just gonna put a few pins in here. Actually, it'd probably be a better idea to use our 505 spray. So let's do that instead. If you have it. Otherwise you can just use your some pins or something to hold it in place. Yeah, that'll that'll hold it good enough. Till we get some quilting in it. Okay, 
I'm going to take over machine and I have a red thread on my machine. It is a darker red than this because that's what I had handy, but I decided that would be pretty good because it would show the quilting a little more. So uh, I, I'm using a darker red than, than the color of the fabric, but it still won't be like using a white or a black on there. So I'm gonna take this over the machine and just probably quilt up and down every other row going one way and uh, every other row going the other way on a diagonal. And the reason I like to use diagonals, I've said this before, I mean, you can use a grid straight up and down, or you can use a pattern if you want, uh, if you want to do free motion quilting, any of that. But the reason I like to use diagonals is they're so forgiving. If you're cutting out something that's square, which we are not, but uh, still, if, if, you're using an up and down and it's slightly not straight, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. But if it's on a diagonal, nobody's gonna notice it. So uh, this, this apple pattern is symmetrical it's on both sides, exactly the same. So it could, uh, it could show up if things were off just a little bit. So I'm going to use the diagonal pattern. Join me at the machine and I will quilt this up real quick. That uh, quilting took me exactly seven minutes in real time, so this is not a time-consuming project. Okay, I am going to pin my template on here and try to get it kind of square so the diagonals are a little, a little bit even. And then I'm just going to cut it out. It's a little pointy there. I need to round that off just a hair, but it's not going to show by the time we get our bias tape on there anyway. Okay, I think I'll give it a little press. My iron's not real hot, but it's a little bit. Okay, now we want to address our leaves. And I believe I said you needed a piece of Insulbrite in between this. You don't. Uh, 
I'm using Insel Bright because I had some scrap pieces that were not going to be good for anything else. You could use a, a piece of batting or uh, you really wouldn't have to use anything at all. Maybe just another piece of fabric or something to make it a little thicker. But we're going to put our leaves down here on our pot holder. Uh, I mean, they'll be loose, but you're not going to be picking up anything hot with just the leaves. So once again, no, we do not want to quilt this. I'm sorry. Here's what we want to do. We want to put right sides together with our batting or insel bright or whatever on the outside. Then I'm going to trace my two leaves. And I did try to make leaves that looked like real apple leaves. All leaves are shaped differently. But I looked at what a real apple leaf looked like. I might should have marked this on the fabric side it, instead of on this insel bride. It might have been easier to see, but I've done it now. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna stitch around those, but I'm gonna leave on the smoothest side on each of them, probably over here, the straightest side. I'm gonna leave a place to turn it because we're gonna have to turn these little things inside out. So uh, that'll be a little bit cumbersome, but it won't be that hard. Okay, let's go stitch our two leaves. Now that I've stitched these, I need to cut them out and turn them. I did realize right after I started that I hadn't changed my thread and I still had red thread in. I'm going to, I mean, I went ahead and left it because it's really not going to show. It'll be on the inside when I turn it. But I am going to change my thread to green because I'm going to do some top stitching on the top of it. So... I'm going to cut this pretty close to the seam, except where we've left it open. I want a good enough piece that we can tuck it in. And then I want to trim it pretty good, pretty close down here at the point. And I'm not using my good scissors for this because I'm cutting through this insel bright. And I'm pretty sure that would dull my good fabric scissors. So the Orange handled ones are my good fabric scissors and this, these red ones can be used for anything. Okay. And actually, it would probably be a good idea to cut these out with pinking shears. Surprised I didn't think of that. Uh, but... Mine are getting pretty dull. I, I've got to find a way to sharpen them or get some new ones. So uh, I won't this time. But if you have pinking shears, especially going around these curves, it would be much better. Otherwise, you need to kind of notch a few places. On the curve part. Okay, let's see if we can turn these without too much trouble. Probably should have left a little bigger seam, but that's just more to sew up. I mean, a little bit bigger opening.
Okay, see what I did? I notched it. And must have uh, cut through the seam or got too close to the seam. So I'm gonna have to turn this one back out or back in, inside out, and restitch that. Not a good thing. So do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, I not I cut through the thread when I did that. Okay, I'm gonna lay that one over there and I'll fix it in a little bit. Let's see if I did this one. I sure did. I'm gonna stitch it real quick here. Okay, I went back and cut my seam. What happened was I was notching on this side and it didn't look like I got it, but I did catch it on the other side. So be careful about that. So let's turn this one and I'll show you what we're gonna do for both of them. Then I'll fix that other one off camera and we'll get them both top stitched and quilted. Kind of hard with all that bulk to get a real tight, I mean pointed, point to that leaf. Also, I'm going to peel this back and I'm going to trim off that extra insel bright that I left on there. So that all we have is the fabric sticking out. Then I'm gonna tuck one side in, then the other side. Try to shape it just a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can pull this little point out a little more. And you can slightly see my red thread. So that's why it's best to use a matching thread or at least something that won't show. It's, it's not gonna hurt this, but it would have looked a little better if I'd used the right thread. Let's kind of iron this so it's tucked in good. Okay, this leaf is, is going to go, it can go either way, but this is where it attaches to the stem. What I'm going to do is stitch, it's pretty hot still, so this isn't going to stay on there real good, but draw myself the vein up the center and just a few little of the side veins. Now I'm gonna put my green thread in. I'm gonna stitch it around here close to the edge. And then for quilting, I'm just gonna stitch in these veins on this leaf. And I'm going to do it on both leaves. So I'll fix that other one and have it ready too. And you can join me at the sewing machine while I stitch the top stitching on this.
now that we have our leaves done, I'm going to pin them in place here. And then I'm going to take them over to the machine and just stitch a little bit here on the edge to kind of hold them in place. They're going to be just decorative. But while I'm doing that, yeah, I only need about half of this. Let me cut it in half. Let's make the little hanger. And again, uh, you could use um, bias tape for this. I have some green I thought about using, but I thought it, it'd be better to match my leaves. You could also use brown, because technically I guess the stems are brown. So I'm going to fold it in half. It's kind of hot. Just so I can get that crease down the middle. And then fold it towards that crease. Now this was not cut on the bias. It does not need to be cut on the bias because we're, it's just going to be straight. The reason the binding had to be cut on the bias is we're going around curves and we need that uh, bias to stretch around those curves. Now I'm going to fold it again. Maybe I am. It's not cooperating right there. I'm trying not to burn my fingers. Okay, I'll straighten it when I go over there to sew. But I'm going to top stitch this and then I'm going to insert it right in here if you can see where there's a little gap I'll insert it as big as I think it needs to be I'll probably trim it down even a little more so when we put the binding and everything on here it's tucked in but I'll put a little stitch on that at the same time I stitch I should show you not me at the same time, I stitch these down. I'll put a little stitch on this. So let's go over to the machine and uh, take care of those last few little green items. Uh, you, I hope you can tell I did use a different color green on purpose. This is more of a gray green, but I, I wanted it. The bangs need to be a little different color than the, the green. Okay, let's do that. Okay, this is now five inches. I do want to make sure I leave a little bit of room there. I think I need to move it down a little bit more for my binding. Now that we have our apple all put together, all we lack is the binding. I did go back and stitch that a little bit more to make sure it held. Now I'm going to use um, an angle here on my binding so I can get around, let me make sure, am I thinking that outright? That would work on this side, okay. 
what I need to do is just fold over a quarter to a half inch and then I'm going to start at the center back here and I am going to stitch the, a quarter inch seam all the way around and you see how we have to kind of stretch it around the curve that's why we needed a bias if we were using something straight it would not uh, lay smoothly it would start pleating on us so I'm going to stitch that all the way around on the back side quarter inch and then we'll take it around to the front side now I've changed to the red thread and I'm just going to use my presser foot as my guide to keep it smooth all the way around equal distance Let's turn it towards the front. And I don't think I mentioned, but you need about at least 26 inches of bias. I'd cut 28 to 30 to be on the safe side. And now we're going to I'll show you the edges in a little bit. We're going to fold it in halfway and then back to the top. So we have about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And here at the top, we've got it folded in so we don't have a raw edge. And I'm just going to shape it around that stem the best I can that that the stems real narrow so you can kind of wrap it around there without too much trouble see how I did that and then I'll come from the other side and we don't have a raw edge here it might be helpful if we ironed this seam we just sewed so it doesn't bunch up on us do you see how I wrapped that Now, I find clips a little easier for that. And on these clips, if you'll look at them sideways, one side's flat and one's rounded. If you'll put the flat side on top, it'll hold it much better in place. The rounded side is just to help with the bulk. You can also use pins. I just find this to be a little easier. Let me dig out some more here real quick.
Now this does kind of have an indention right here at the bottom. So you want to honor that best you can. The more curved the piece is, the more clips it takes in that area. And this is a pretty curvy piece all the way around. But because we're using bias, it's going to lay perfectly smooth. I think that got a little crease in it when I was ironing the back there. So it doesn't want to fold under. When I get over to the sewing machine and as I go, I'll be able to take off a clip and make sure it's folded under like I want it. Okay, I'm going to start right here and top stitch all the way around. And our pothole, <laughs> probably be helpful if I put it in the viewer. I'm gonna start right here, top stitch right around there, and our potholder will be done. I hit a pin. I'm gonna to have to change my needle now. I, I didn't think I had gotten to it. Let me see. I don't know if it's gonna sew. I may have to stop and change the needle. I'll change it after this anyway. So be very careful of that. I'm showing you all the wrong things to do on this video. It is still sewing, but it will need a new needle. because the point will be dull. So, don't clip your, uh, clip your seams too close and don't run over a pin. Okay, the needle broke when it got back there to starting point. I'm not sure why, but we made it all the way around and I will change that needle and I'll probably stitch right there at the end a little better. Okay, let's go back to the ironing board. I'm going to give this a really good steam. And 
and here is our apple pot holder. Now, you really do want to make sure you have this little indention in there because that's what distinguishes it from being a tomato. Uh, a tomato will be round all the way around. So these two little indentions are important to make sure people know it's an apple. All right, that ends today's tutorial. I have planned uh, pot holders that are grapes, bananas, uh, pear, and an orange so far. If there's another fruit you'd like to see, let me know, and I'll see if I can design it. And then I'll show you how to make a tree you can hang them all on, too. Our uh, next video will either be another pot holder. It just depends on how long it takes me to get my quilt done. Or this is the stained glass quilt. This is the uh, fabrics we're using for it. It's, it's going to be very vibrant. I love it. I appreciate each and every one of you. And remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord. Thank you.